Howdy folks, Ed here. Welcome back to Bullnose Garage. What's big bad, it makes other V8s look like they skipped leg day. That's right, it's the Ford 460 Big Block. It's brute force, jaw-dropping torque, and an engine that dominates on any road sounds good to you, buckle up. Today, we're breaking down the legendary Ford 460. Whether it's turning heads at a stoplight, hauling massive loads, tearing up the drag strip, or just cruising, this gas-powered behemoth can do it all. Introduced in 1968, the 460 V8, aka the 7.5 liter, has ruled streets, highways, and job sites for decades. Whether it was powering the iconic F-Series trucks or hauling the Lincoln Continental's massive luxury frame, the 460 earned its reputation for serious pulling power. Keep watching, because we're drilling down into everything you need to know, including the 460 specs, performance potential, and the killer mods that still make it a builder's dream to death. Hello. While small blocks like the 302 or 351 Windsor love to rev high, the 460 plays a different game, delivering brute force where it counts, low end torque. Forget high red lines. This beast is built to move trailers, boats, or whatever you hitch up to. Even though it retired in 97, the 460 is still a go-to for modern builds, off-roading, drag racing, or swapping into a classic truck for some extra heft. The 460 made its debut in 1968 as part of Ford's 385 engine family, alongside the 429 and 370. The name comes from the 3.85 inch stroke, not because there's a 385 engine, which there isn't. The 460 had a different role than its 429 sibling which was more performance oriented. Ford needed an engine that could provide massive low end torque for their full size trucks and larger vehicles. As a result, the 460 became a staple in Ford's heavy duty lineup, known for its ability to haul practically anything you could throw at it. It found its way into both trucks and luxury cars, starting with models like the Lincoln Continental and Ford Thunderbird. The engine's design made it ideal for towing and hauling while also delivering smooth power in those early 70s land yachts. But as the 70s rolled on, stricter emissions regulations started hitting the entire auto industry. Like most engines of the era, the 460 got hit hard. Compression ratios dropped and so did horsepower from around 365 to much lower numbers by the late 70s. Even with the drop in horsepower, the 460 still packed enough torque to stay in demand, powering trucks, RVs, and motorhomes well into the 90s. Here's a quick look at the vehicles that rolled off the factory floor with the 460 under the hood. Towing a trailer or a boat, the 460 won't even flinch. That's why you'll still find these engines in old RVs and motorhomes. They were built for the long haul, and decades later, they're still cruising down highways on road trips. Like many of Ford's engines, from 1983 onward, Ford switched to a one-piece rear main seal, reducing oil leaks, an improvement over the earlier two-piece seal. Makes rebuilds easier and cleaner. In 1979, Ford changed the 460's balance from internal to external, shifting some of the balancing work to the flywheel or flex plate and harmonic damper, which was a cost-saving measure. By the 1990s, Ford introduced EFI, or electronic fuel injection, enhancing throttle response and improving fuel control, especially on trucks and RVs. These changes made the later 460s more user-friendly for modern driving while maintaining their legendary torque output. Let's dig into the specs because the 460 brings some serious numbers to the table. The 460 lives up to its name with 460 cubic inches or 7.5 liters of displacement. It's got a 4.36 inch bore and a 3.85 inch stroke, both of which contribute to the low end pulling power this engine is known for. Early 460s from 68 to 71 had a high 10.5 to 1 compression ratio, delivering around 365 horsepower and 485 pound-feet of torque. However, the 70s brought new challenges. Emissions regulations forced Ford to drop that to around 8.0 to 1, cutting back output to around 220 horses and 350 pound-feet of torque. Today, raising compression with new pistons or upgrading the cam is a common way to restore or increase performance. Deck height stayed consistent at 10.322 inches throughout the production. In terms of dimensions, the 460 meters roughly 34 inches long, 27 inches wide, and about 30 inches high. 
It's a large displacement engine that fits well in trucks and larger vehicles, but might need some creative work to fit into smaller engine bits. As for weight, the 460 tips the scales at around 720 pounds with its cast iron block and heads. That's part of what makes it so tough, but you'll definitely want to consider that if you're planning a swap into something small. The firing order follows the standard Ford V8 sequence, 154-26378. As for oil capacity, the 460 holds about six quarts, filter included. If you're running it hard or towing, consider upgrading to a larger oil pan for better cooling. Now, about the crankshaft. Factory 460s came with a cast iron crankshaft, which is plenty strong for most applications, but if you're chasing high performance, upgrading to a Ford steel crank is the best move for peace of mind. The 460 is known for its sturdiness, and with the right upgrades, it's capable of cranking out far more power than it had from the factory. Builders can push these engines into the 6 to 700 horsepower range fairly easily. Add Ford's internals, high flow heads, and a beefed up valve train, and the 460 turns into a force to be reckoned with on the street or at the strip. Even though the 460, 429, and 370 all came from Ford's 385 engine family, each one was designed with a different purpose in mind. The 460 is designed to haul serious weight effortlessly. It has the longest stroke of the bunch at 3.85 inches. Pair that with a big bore, and you've got an engine perfect for getting massive trucks and RVs up to speed without needing to rev too high. It was also used in those land yachts I mentioned, like Lincoln Continental, where the only thing bigger than the engine was the back seat. The 429, on the other hand, is all about performance. It shares the same 4.36 inch bore as the 460, but it has a shorter 3.59 inch stroke, making it ideal for high revving performance. This engine was perfect for muscle cars like the Mustang and Torino, where top end horsepower mattered most. The Carburejet and Boss 429 became legends for a reason, built to wind up quicker and push harder at higher RPMs. If you're chasing speed and high RPM thrills, the 429 shorter stroke is your ticket. Then. There's the 370, the old reliable of the family, with a smaller 4.05 inch bore and the same 3.59 inch stroke as the 429. The 370 wasn't built for speed or heavy pulling. Instead, it was designed to handle the grunt work in medium duty trucks and industrial applications. The 370 is the engine you'd find in a vehicle that needs to keep running day in and day out. It's not about speed or flash, it's about showing up every single day. Here's a fun fact and a useful tip for engine builders. The 429 and 460 blocks are basically identical. The real difference comes down to the crankshaft and pistons, so if you're assembling either engine from the ground up, it doesn't really matter if you start with a 429 or a 460 block if you're swapping out the internals. You could take the crank and pistons from a 460, fit them into a 429, and you've got yourself a 460. The bore size is the same, 4.36 inches, but the stroke is what sets them apart. The 429 has a 3.59 inch stroke, and the 460 stretches that out to 3.85 inches. Now, to be fair, it's not quite that simple when you start talking about internal versus external balance, heads and intakes, but overall, the blocks are identical. The takeaway for performance builds is that either block gives you a solid foundation, and the internals decide if you're working on a 429 or a 460. So, how do you tell them all apart? Well, telling the 460, 429, and 370 apart isn't always easy, especially with the 429 and 460, since they're nearly identical on the outside. Fortunately, there are reliable ways to tell them apart using casting numbers and internal components. So one of the easiest ways to spot a 370 block is by checking the casting numbers. Since it was cast from a different mold with a smaller 4.05 inch bore, the 370 has unique casting numbers. Look for D9TE-BB, which is specific to the 1979 to 1984 truck blocks and identifies a 370. This makes it easier to distinguish from the 429 or 460. But with the 429 and 460, things get more complicated. These two share the same block casting with identical numbers like C8VE, D0VE, and D1VE, so casting numbers alone won't help you tell them apart. To distinguish a 429 from a 460, you'll need to inspect the crankshaft markings or measure the stroke. Ford stamped alphanumeric codes on the crankshaft counterweights. For a 429, look for codes like 4U, 4UA, or 4UAB. For a 460, look for 2Y, 2YA, 2YAB, 3Y, or something similar. 
Another clue is on the 460 crankshaft, there's an embossed nodule between the first main journal and the counterweight, which makes it an obvious identifier once the oil pan is off. But the most reliable way is probably just to measure the stroke. The 429 has a 3.59 inch stroke, while the 460 stretches it out to 3.85 inches. Measuring the stroke gives you a definitive answer, especially if the other methods leave any doubt. Additionally, the 370 often used different exhaust manifolds due to its industrial and truck applications. The manifolds were generally more restricted, built for durability rather than performance. In contrast, the 429s and 460s built for performance often had larger manifolds or headers to maximize airflow. The Ford 460 commands serious respect in the performance world, and for good reason. Its strong block, large displacement, and massive aftermarket catalog make it an awesome platform for builders looking to unlock more power or create a high-performance beast. Whether you want mild upgrades or a full overhaul, the 460 can handle just about anything you throw at it. One of the first upgrades many builders go for is improving airflow. The stock 460 comes with cast iron heads, which are heavy, and restricted. Swapping them out for aluminum heads from brands like Edelbrock or Trickflow is a popular move. These heads offer far better airflow and can boost horsepower significantly. Plus, they shave a lot of weight off the front end. For those wanting to go all out, stroker kits are the way to go. A stroker kit bumps up displacement by using a longer stroke crankshaft, and in the 460's case, you can push it to 514 cubic inches or more. These kits usually come with a new crankshaft, rods, and pistons. In the stroker kit, expect massive gains in low-end torque and horsepower, turning that 460 into a freight train of guts and glory. Now, Ford equipped 460s with hydraulic flat tappet lifters from the factory, but unlike its small block cousins, the 460 doesn't need block modification to accept a roller cam and roller lifters. This means you can literally grab a roller cam and lifters off the shelf and drop them in giving you more options and more aggressive profiles. But keep in mind that the 460 wasn't designed for roller lifters, and the taller lifters can cause geometry issues which increase wear over time. This is mostly a problem with hydraulic roller lifters along with aggressive cam profiles. So if you're going roller, it's best to either run solid roller lifters or keep your cam on the milder side. Another popular mod is converting a carbureted 460 to fuel injection. While stock 460s in the 70s and 80s were carbureted, Ford switched to EFI in the 90s. EFI conversions provide smoother performance, better fuel efficiency, and more precise tuning. Aftermarket systems like Holly Sniper or Fitec make the swap pretty much a breeze. But if you like to go old school and you're sticking with a carburetor, upgrading to a larger performance carb is a common move. Stock carbs can be limiting. So upgrading to something like a um, Holly 750 CFM or 850 CFM helps feed the big 460 more fuel and air, which means more power. Exhaust upgrades are another area where the 460 responds well and you'll see a big impact. Installing headers is a common mod that improves airflow and reduces exhaust restrictions. Headers help scavenge exhaust gases more efficiently, which boosts horsepower and torque. Pair them with a free-flowing exhaust system, delivering a serious power boost and an aggressive growl. Now, if you really want to go out there and you're looking to push the 460's upper limits, adding a supercharger or turbocharger takes things to a whole other level. A supercharged 460 can make insane horsepower gains, especially when paired with other mods like aluminum heads, performance cam, and a stroker kit. Turbocharging is less common, but still a solid option if you want to force even more air into the engine and extract every last bit of power. Just make sure that your drive chain can keep up. Standing a drive shaft makes for a really bad day. So, after all that aftermarket pillow talk, are you thinking of swapping a 460 into your ride? Well, swapping a 460 is a popular choice for lots of vehicles. Classic Ford trucks, especially F-Series models from the 70s and 80s, or even older ones like the F100 are a common fit. The 460 turns those trucks into off-road bruisers or worksite powerhouses. Some builders even drop a 460 into Fox Body Mustangs, though it's not common, for brutal straight line performance. The 460's versatility makes it a great option for hot rods and custom builds as well. Muscle cars like the Ford Torino or Mercury Cougar also benefit from a 460 swap. No matter where you put it, the 460 brings the muscle. So clearly, the appeal of swapping a 460 in can't be denied. It's one of the largest displacement engines Ford ever made, and that means tons of power and torque even stock. There's also the bragging rights. Having the biggest gas engine Ford ever put in standard vehicles under your hood is undeniably cool. 
It delivers massive performance while staying true to the Ford family. What's not to love? Well, there are a few skeletons in the 460's closet, namely weight, size, and fuel economy. Well, you're probably not thinking about saving gas if you're swapping into 460, keep in mind that big blocks are famous for guzzling fuel, and the 460 is as big as they come. And while the 460 delivers tons of power, swapping it into vehicles that weren't originally designed for it comes with a few challenges. As I've said just once or twice, the 460 is a big engine. You might need to modify the engine bay or frame to make it fit. Trucks and larger vehicles handle it better, but smaller cars may need fabrication. Also, many transmissions can't handle the 460's torque, so upgrading to something stronger is often a must, like a C6 automatic, or a modern overdrive transmission like the uh, 4R100 or E40D. Also, the 460 generates a lot of heat, so upgrading to a heavy-duty radiator, electric fans, and a beefed-up water pump can be almost a requirement, especially in tight engine bays with limited airflow. Depending on the vehicle, you might also need a custom oil pan to clear the suspension or cross member. And when it comes to exhaust clearance, headers and manifolds could run into issues, especially in smaller bays, meaning you may need custom exhaust work. The good news is that there are plenty of swap kits available to make the process easier. Companies like LNL Products and Advanced Adapters offer motor mounts, headers, and other components to help fit a 460 into older Ford trucks or custom applications. They typically include almost everything you need to simplify the swap and avoid extensive fabrication work. And here's a fun fact, believe it or not, some builders have even squeezed 460s into Ford Rangers. Now it's not an easy fit, but with some modifications to the firewall and frame, the lightweight Ranger paired with the 460 turns it into a wild street truck or drag truck. Swapping a big block into a smaller vehicle like the Ranger offers crazy power to weight ratios and shall we say a unique driving experience. As I said just a moment ago, pairing a transmission with a Ford 460 requires something that can handle its substantial torque. The C6 Automatic is one of the most common choices. Famous for handling massive torque, the C6 was a factory option for many 460 equipped vehicles, especially trucks and larger sedans. It's three-speed automatic and one of the most bulletproof transmissions Ford ever made. It's a good choice for stock or mildly modified 460s. It handles most power upgrades with ease and is widely available, making it common for builds where simplicity and reliability matter the most. But with only three speeds, it's not great for fuel economy or cruising on the highway. To help solve that, the E40D and 4R100 are also popular options. Both are heavy duty automatics with overdrive, making them great for street driven builds and towing alike. These transmissions were factory paired with the 460 in Ford's F-Series trucks and E-Series vans during the early and late 90s, respectively. The 4R100 introduced later is an upgraded version of the E40D with better internals. Both transmissions offer the C6's low-end torque handling, plus the bonus of overdrive. While it's less common, some builders actually opt for a manual transmission with the 460. The Tremec TKO600 or T56 Magnum are popular options for those who want full control of the power. As always, it's important to remember that swapping in a manual transmission means you'll need a clutch setup, proper bell housing, and pedal modifications if you're converting from an automatic. The Ford 460 wasn't just made for hauling heavy loads or sitting under the hood of RVs. It was built to leave a mark, and it definitely has. Decades after production ended, the 460 still dominates in classic truck restorations and performance builds, cementing its reputation as one of the toughest, most versatile big blocks out there. In the world of restorations, the 460 reigns supreme. Powering old school F-Series trucks or breathing new life into vintage RVs, this engine is still trusted to handle any job you throw at it. Its reputation as a reliable, torque-heavy engine is set in stone. This engine never gives up, and neither do the people who rely on it. But let's not forget, the 460's legacy isn't just about work. It's about power. Performance builders love it because once you dig into a 460, it offers limitless potential. Looking for a tire shredding, quarter mile scorching beast? The 460's got you covered. This engine still powers drag cars, hot rods, and even some unexpected swaps. Why? Because it delivers the kind of muscle that turns heads and leaves the competition in the dust. So after all that, what keeps it relevant? Well, it's pretty simple. Aftermarket support and a dedicated army of builders, 
parts are still readily available to rebuild or upgrade this engine into whatever fits your dream build, whether it's a street cruiser, towing workhorse, or custom racer. The 460 isn't some relic, it's a living legend. For anyone chasing big power or classic torque, the 460 is still hard to beat. Whether it's pulling trailers or leaving rubber on the road, this engine's mix of brute strength and upgrade potential guarantees a lasting spot in the hearts and engine bays of enthusiasts for years to come. So there you go, guys. That's everything I know or pretend to know about the Ford 460 Big Block. Hopefully you learned something about it today. If you did, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I really appreciate that. Go out and buy yourself a cool hat, help support the channel. Hey, you know, make sure you drop a comment if you have any questions, comments, concerns, gripes, internet rambling, stick them below. If I got something wrong, please let me know. I'll pin a comment to the top and correct myself. I got no problem doing that. Uh, guys, like I said, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoy the channel. Thanks again so much for watching, guys, and we will see you next time. She's rough around the edges, but she's doing fine. Take her right away, giving thanks to shine. At Bull Nose Garage, she's considered divine. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.